Today I'm going to talk about inspecting position tolerances. So in front of me I've got a surface plate, a bunch of gauge pins, height gauge, angle block, one, two, three block, a couple clamps, and a micrometer. That's all we're going to need to inspect a couple of holes and make sure they're in the, you know, within the positional tolerance. Now I'll put the drawing on the screen here. We've got a rectangular part with datums A, B, and C. They're all planar datums. That means we can simulate them with just a flat surface, right? We're going to be looking for 16 holes. I'm just gonna check one because they all go about the same. The diameter is a quarter inch plus 10 minus four thousandths with a seven thousandths positional tolerance at maximum material condition. So that just means if the hole comes in at 2.46, you have a 7 thousandths diameter tolerance zone. If the hole comes in bigger, you're gonna get more positional tolerance equal to the difference between the smallest the hole can be and what the hole actually is. So when we start getting some numbers, I'll show you how to do that. If the part is within that 7 thousandths positional tolerance without factoring the bonus tolerance, that's fine too. You don't always have to add the bonus tolerance if the part is already good. So I've got my part right here. I'll show it on this camera. I've identified datum B, datum C, and datum A on the back with the Sharpie. This is just gonna help in this video so we all know what's going on. I could just scratch this off with a Scotch-Brite pad when I'm done. Now, this part, the way it's made, it's symmetric, right? On the drawing, there's supposed to be a little chamfer here. There should be some kind of marking on this part because right now you could consider, you know, this datum B and this datum C and it'd mean the same thing. If a part is perfectly symmetrical like this, Say we check it to datum B and C and this orientation, the part's not good. You could scratch these off, flip it over and say, hey, now this is datum B and this is datum C. Who's gonna prove you wrong, right? There's nothing on this part that makes it not symmetrical. So we'll do it this way. We talk a little bit about the equipment. We've got a whole bunch of gauge pins. Now the gauge pins are gonna be used to simulate the actual mating envelope of each one of these holes. So the way we get an axis for a hole in the real world is we're gonna find the largest gauge pin that will fit in the hole. Now that gauge pin is gonna stick out of the part. We'll bring our height gauge to that gauge pin and that'll give us the deflection of the axis, how far it is off. All we do is subtract half of the diameter of the gauge pin. It'll give us the distance from the table to the middle of the gauge pin, AKA the axis in a single direction. So we've got an angle block and a one, two, three block. We'll use these to simulate our datums with the surface plate. Now with this inspection equipment, we're gonna consider all of this perfect. Okay, we're not gonna factor in any tolerances with the actual uh, angle block and one, two, three block, they're made to extremely tight tolerances, say plus or minus a tenth of a thousandths. The only thing is you can't stack this stuff excessively, okay? So you don't wanna put the angle plate on top of a one, two, three block and stack something on top of here because you will eventually get tolerance stack up even though the tolerances on this stuff are really, really tight, okay? So we wanna avoid stacking it as much as possible. Let's dive right into the actual inspection. I'm gonna find the largest gauge pin that's gonna fit in this hole right here. All right, so there's no perceptible play. So I already know which gauge pin it is. It's uh, 0.251, okay? That's the largest that'll fit in there. I'll double check it. with a micrometer and we can read 0.251 right here just to make sure we know exactly what this diameter is. That'll come in handy when we're calculating our bonus tolerance if we need it. I'll place the gauge pin in the hole. Now 
I'm gonna set up datum A to its simulator, okay? It's easier than it sounds. All I do is push it against this angle block and I'll hold it in place. So now we've got at least three points of contact on this block, all right? If you can see right there, I can still move it around. We'll end up clamping this so it won't fall down, but that gives us uh, datum A. Now datum B, we need two points on this table. So I'm just gonna move it down nice and slow until we get those two points of contact, okay? So it's got kind of constant pressure here. You don't wanna let it off of the angle plate to make contact here, okay? So you wanna keep it constrained to the angle plate and then make sure it's just touching the table. Now, to measure from datum B, datum C doesn't matter. We actually don't need to set up to datum C right now. The reason is that even if we did, right, so say we go ahead, set up to datum C, it's not gonna change our measurement from the table because datum C only needs one point of contact. That means constraining translation in left and right. That's not gonna affect our measurement from the table in this direction. So I'm gonna remove this block, we don't need it. Now, I've got this little clamp. I've already set this to put the minimum amount of pressure on here. You don't wanna torque it down because you could bend the part and mess up your whole datum alignment. So I'll set it up right here and as close to the middle of the part as I can. We're probably gonna have to move it if we're checking all 16 holes, but this is good enough to check at least this first hole. So that's all we gotta do to measure from datum B. We'll move in with our height gauge, make sure that's visible. I'm gonna lower this to the table, and then I'm gonna zero our height gauge, so we're measuring from the table. At this point, I can move our height gauge in here. I wanna measure as close to the actual part as I can. If you measure it way out here, right, you're measuring a projected tolerance zone, right? Because if the axis is off by a couple degrees, it's gonna get worse the further it goes out. So measure it as close to the part as you can. All right, I'm gonna lower this down and I'm gonna get a reading. So the reading I'm getting here is 0 0.6205. I will write that down. Now we subtract half of the gauge pin. So our gauge pin was 0.251. So our math is gonna look like this. Our actual measured location was 0 0.6205. Half of the gauge pin is 0.1255. Our actual location in this Y direction or from datum B is 0.495, okay? So I could move my height gauge up and away. Now, if I was gonna check all 16 holes on this part, I could just move this gauge pin, and as long as it's still the correct gauge pin, right, the largest gauge pin that would fit, I could go through and check all 16 holes in this direction, right? So I could come in, check this hole, get a reading, do that same equation, right, the measured location minus half of the gauge pin, and get my location in this direction. That's a little bit of a time saver if you're doing a whole bunch of holes at once because right now we're gonna reset up to measure in the other direction from datum C, okay? So I'm gonna release the part. Measuring from datum C is gonna be different. We can't use the same setup because the datums are a little different. So what I'll do here is remove the part I'm gonna flip it this way. Datum A is still primary, but now datum B needs two points of contact and datum C needs one point of contact. We will need to involve another piece of inspection equipment. So what I'm gonna do is move this one, two, three block into the side of here. This is gonna simulate datum B. Like I said before, we can essentially consider this as an inspection equipment 
perfect for our purposes right now. This angle plate should have good 90 degree corners. So when we do this, this is simulating that uh, mutually perpendicular planes of the datum reference frame as best as we can. This block and this have a little bit of oil on them. So I can kind of rub it back and forth and it's gonna essentially stay put for the purposes of this video. Now, if you were checking a bunch of these, maybe you wanna get a clamp and put across, put across here so you know they stay put. I'm essentially happy with just the stickiness of that oil and that real smooth surface holding them together. Now, I'm gonna hold this to datum A. I'm gonna get two points of contact on datum B here, and then I'm gonna move the part down and get one point of contact on datum C. So it's very subtle, but I'm pushing against here for datum A, I'm holding it against datum B to try to hold those two points, and then slowly pushing it to datum C. I'm gonna hold this whole mess together while I get this clamp. So I've got this clamped, again, light pressure. It probably would have paid dividends to go ahead and put a clamp on this. It was a little bit of tricky. If my hands were a little bit bigger, maybe I could hold it better. We've essentially accomplished what we want to accomplish though. We've got our datum reference frame set up. Now, we're gonna measure from datum C. I'd consider this to be the X direction in, um, in this measurement. So we're gonna come in with our height gate height gauge just like we did before. I'm going to move my whole setup over here a little bit. Get as close to the part as I can. And we're going to get 0.6285. So I did a quick calculation. The x direction, which we just measured, is 0.6285 minus half of the gauge pin is 0.503. That's how far it is away from the datum, okay? Now, again, we could go around the entire part and measure all of them. Again, I would probably put another clamp on here because when you're moving that gauge pin in and out, it's gonna tend to move around a little bit. So maybe you'd need a more secure setup if you were gonna go check all 16. But I'm just checking one, so I'm not worried about it. Now, move this out of the way. We can figure out what the diameter of positional variation is. These two numbers don't tell us anything about whether the tolerance is within tolerance or not within tolerance. So 0.495 and 0.503. The tolerance is seven thousandths at MMC. That's a diameter. These are just uh, you know, linear dimensions. So how we figure out what the position is supposed to be, we're gonna convert these into uh, the variation. So. So here we go, we're gonna subtract the basic dimension. So this one is negative five thousandths, this one is positive three thousandths, okay? The equation we need is the diameter of positional variation is two times the square root of the variation in x squared plus the variation in y squared. So we'll figure that out right here. So after a quick calculation, we go through the math. We've got a diameter of positional variation of 0.0116. That number is gonna be greater than the seven thousandths given on the drawing by far. So now we can go in and figure out if the bonus tolerance can bail us out. What is the bonus tolerance? We know the actual hole is a diameter of 0.251. So here's the envelope calculation. 
Our actual diameter is 0.251. The MMC diameter is 0.246, the smallest it's allowed to be. Subtract those two, the bonus is five thousandths. So we can add the bonus to what's actually allowed. The specified tolerance is seven thousandths. That's what's on the drawing. The bonus tolerance, which we just figured out, is five thousandths. We add those together, our allowable tolerance is 12 thousandths. That is slightly greater than what we actually calculated from the tape from measuring here. So that hole would actually be good, right? So that's what I mean. If it was good without doing that, we don't have to calculate the bonus tolerance. But in situations where you get your result back and it's outside the actual positional tolerance taken up is larger than what's specified, you can figure out what the bonus tolerance is, figure out what the allowable tolerance is, and then see if the part is good. In this case, that one hole is good if we figure in the bonus tolerance, okay? Now, we'd have to do that for all 16 holes. I would highly recommend, if you're doing this at a table, write up a quick Excel spreadsheet to do this for you. You know, you could write down what your actual results are, punch all that in a spreadsheet, and it'll automatically calculate all of this for you. There's really no reason to do it by hand other than just explaining what's going on like I'm doing here now, okay? So that's all I have for today. Just wanna to talk about inspecting position on the plate. Now there's more than one way to do it. It depends on what the drawing is telling you. This drawing was pretty straightforward and this is a very typical way to do it as long as the hole is the size of you know, a normal gauge pin. Okay? So if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe. If you agree or disagree, comment below. Let me know what you think. I'll make more of these at the surface plate coming soon.